G'day fixers, and welcome to my version of Steve Ramsey's Small Parts Storage. A wee while ago, I signed up to Woodworking for Me Immortals The Weekend Workshop course, and I've been greatly enjoying it. I've made a number of the projects, well, my version of the projects, tailored and catered to fit my space, and this one is no different, but I am following his plans relatively closely. I'd highly encourage you to check it out, even if you think you know what you're doing, because like me, you're gonna get inspiration, ideas, and motivation for improving your workspace, which is, you know, what this hobby is all about. Link in the description below. Most of this is gonna be made out of recycled plywood. That thicker piece is three quarter inch for the main carcass, and this darker piece is 15 mil, or five eighths of an inch, which will be the primary dividers. When handling both of these pieces, I'm gonna try and mark out and cut all of my dados before we cut it down to final size. What I'd really like folks to take away from this particular video is you may have noticed I don't own a table saw. I can't fit one and a car in my little garage, so I'd like to really focus on how I'm using a series of edge guides, ripping jigs, and various other bits and pieces to get around not having the heart of the workshop and show that you can do this with a circular saw and a router. Now annoyingly, I didn't have a 15 mil router bit, so I've had to take an extra step here when cutting these dados. Using circular saw to mark them out from both sides, and then the router to clean up. Ripping down the top and bottom piece, ensuring that way, that my dividers will be spaced evenly. But before I can put them in, they too are gonna to need a whole bunch of six millimeter or quarter inch grooves. And I am gonna to have to use MDF here. Sadly, I couldn't get any six mil plywood, just short supplies due to various world events. But fortunately the router table made fairly quick work and gave me some perfectly tight dados and the good thing of MDF, when it says 6mm, it is 6mm. There is an awful lot of repetition in this build. My version is going to have 54 drawers and that's over 300 pieces and thousands upon thousands of cuts and repetition of various activities. Every time you decide to do something in a project like this, you have to times it by 54, and that's just for the drawers. Ooh, here was a little highlight. And one of the risks of using wood that you find in the gutter. For some godforsaken reason, there was a screw head buried in here, and luckily I was taking shallow passes and only just nicked it. And it didn't damage the blade too badly, could still just screw it out. So here's the dry fit of the main frame along with the internal dividers. Yeah, some of them were perfect, some of them were a wee bit tight and some of them were a wee bit loose. But at the end of the day, a bit of glue and sawdust is gonna help me hide those ends. Right, so the first six mil MDF section will be basically what the drawers are gonna sit on. There are no rails here, they're just simple box construction. And the longer I went on, the more efficient I was able to become with my cutting of all of these pieces. Just finding ways to do them in batches. You get faster as you go along, but even so, I think this whole build took me somewhere around 50 to 60 hours of workshop time but I loved it, it was great fun. It's just really about making the best of what you have. For me, the two primary tools that replace my lack of table saw are this Craig Rip Cut. It's really good, you can set it very, very accurately and make repeatable cuts. Here, if you can figure out a way to clamp down your sheet goods correctly, then you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, however many you need and then the cross cuts are quickly handled on the miter saw. But even that, you could get away with using a little cross cut jig. While it might have been dodgy, that little momentum there can show you that it dry fit together really well without falling apart. So I was pretty darn happy with that. And it fit in at my space perfectly. 
that brown plywood was pretty rough and flaky. I think it had gotten quite wet at one stage, but it was holding together all right. And when I was satisfied that everything was going to fit together, I used Presto my nail gun throughout this project to basically speed things up. Wouldn't have to wait for the glue to dry. Bit of type 1 3 into the dados, tack attack attack attacker, and hey presto, we had a frame. Cheeky little tie lapse. These 6 mils were very tight and sometimes required a bit too much persuasion. Tried not to damage the edges of the MDF and we got them in eventually. Just a little bit of glue, tiny bit of glue right on the end was all we needed to hold them in place. There were some voids in the plywood and, uh, well, some voids in my cutting. Glue and sawdust mixed together makes a nice little bog paste. Kevin the sander comes out to smooth it all off and it looks a lot more professional than it really is. Lovely tight fit. Speaking of channel members, Chopper Chris is of course doing most of the work here, my lovely circular saw. And just one after the other, we cut that many draw pieces, because that's where we are at. The frame honestly went together pretty quickly, but these drawers kicked my ass. It was weeks of part-time, couple of hours here, couple of days there, getting everything sorted. The router table, I said getting things done before you cut them to final size was really nice. That lower groove there, rebate, rabbit, whatever you want to call it is where the base is going to go. The base is just going to be 6mm MDF again and sit flush. However, cutting safely, the rebate on the short edge was going to be tricky on the router table, so I made this custom push block and that worked really lovely. I could do one drawer at a time, flip it around, cut the other end, and that gave me the basic shape that I needed to be able to assemble these. Again, just going to be glue and brad nails. Every step of this draw construction phase needed a jig. I made them all purposely slightly oversized. And this little jig added to the stop block on my miter saw allowed me to get them down to the exact height because eh, guess what? Uh, not all those rows were exactly evenly spaced. So starting oversized and sneaking up on it, I was able to get a lovely tight fit to about a mil, half mil tolerance. In Sydney, we were getting torrential rain, and the good news was the workshop was pretty humid, so if this MDF was going to swell, it's going to swell now. If anything, it'll shrink as the rains disappear, which was great for my draw fitting. Rather be a little bit loose and a little bit tight. Yet another jig, and this time for assembly. A bit of glue allowed me to square up quite nicely on my clamping bench, each of the draw boxes and then tack attack attack it with Presto. I had relatively few blowouts on the brad nails. They're only 15 mils, so 5 eighths of an inch again, and they were fantastic. I said hundreds and hundreds of brads went into this, and I only had a couple that I had to come back and fix up afterwards. Steve uses elastic bands, but uh, quite frankly, this was just a lot faster. Final sand with Kevin to custom fit every drawer to the correct slot. It might have taken a really long time, but honestly, it was a lot of fun. And when you get to moments like this where you complete a stage and it just fits in perfectly, it's been one of the most satisfying projects that I think I worked on, even if it took forever. Another really handy tool to get your hands on if you don't have a table saw is a track saw, or in my case, an AccuCut, the poor man's version of a track saw, where Chopper Chris can just mount onto that sled and cut down this time some 12mm MDF for the draw fronts, which I actually got for free from the timber yard because, well, it was a bit of scrap, and when I bought on my 6mm sheets, they gave it to me. The best thing about that Craig sled is you can go from the track saw to the rip cut without changing anything. It just jumps over from one to the other, and it... The two of them combined really do replace a lot of the functions that a table saw will give you. Not quite as fast, not as accurate, but they do it well in a small space. Measuring and marking out my draw fronts, I put a dirty great big chamfer on the front 
The idea was to not have any hardware like I've done on my other drawers and cabinet fronts in the workshop and just use that little chamfer underneath as the pull. That didn't quite work out, but for the moment we were pushing on with that design idea. Here's a handy hack I found to make sure your drawers are fitting perfectly. If you can get them out with a vacuum, they're good. If you can't get them out, then you need to sand them down a little bit more so they're not too tight. I was pretty proud of this little jig. Using the clamping bench to its full potential, it just pushes them out about 6mm and supports them from the back. There's not going to be a back on this set of drawers. And by holding them proud, I could paint some glue onto the front, a little bit of super glue, no activator, so I had a few seconds just to manipulate it. A couple of spaces, they're about 2 or 3mm, 1 8 of an inch. And I could use them to mount my lovely drawer fronts. Again, no screws, tack attack attack with Presto the nail gun made life a lot easier. If a drawer ever breaks, well, I know a guy who can fix it. One after the other, and a lot of podcasts on, we got through these repetitive tasks. And again, reaching the end of every stage was just so satisfying. Glued, assembled ready to go in its new home. Having a mobile workbench is also very handy because this thing now weighs an absolute ton. And fit like a glove. All right, so I mentioned that my little chamfer finger pulls weren't going to work. There just wasn't enough space, so I was going to use some dowels instead as knobs. But my drawers were just too big to fit under my drill press, and I didn't want to do this by hand. So how's this for a cheeky hack? I had a bit over two and a quarter inches, 60 millimeters of spare space, which I don't think I really needed. So cutting a three quarter inch, 19 mil disc using a hole saw, pop that down. I still got 40 millimeters of, well, safety to secure the pole to the drill press stand. And that gave me just enough clearance for my drill bit to do the dowel holes. But first we need some dowel. Another cheeky little jig, kind of like one I made on my bookmark project, just to keep these 54 little knobs for a consistent length. Sometimes hand tools are faster than the power tools. Dirty hack disc sander, puts a tiny little chamfer onto the knobs. And there's some of that torrential rain. God, it nearly flooded that day. Quickly finding center. And then on my elevated drill press, I could use the laser to get relatively accurate holes. I've only recently got this thing. God, it's fun and so much faster than, more accurate than doing it by hand. No risk of blowing through the bottom. And out comes the Vando mallet to smack in the little knobs. Double check they all seat properly. And we're getting very close to completion. Smacky, 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 smacky. Checky, 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 checky. And there we go. But I decided those square bottoms just looked crap. And as I was now using draw pulls, back over to the router table for 54 more processes of putting a chamfer on the bottom as well as on the top. And it looked much better. Very happy with that design change. Speaking of Vando, he did point out that, you know, you really should have painted these before putting the drawer fronts on. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that would be a great idea. Because then I could have avoided doing this uh, all by hand with a paintbrush. And you just would have needed to touch them up afterwards. But live and learn. And I was already in the process driven mode. So doing 54 coats of primer and 54 320 grit sanding sessions and 54 bits of blue tape to mask off the knobs. It just flew by in about three days. But I got myself comfy and settled on in. I don't do many shorts, but I did do one on these stop loss bags recently and they're pretty damn cool. I got the idea from Paul the Wood Knight. And I love them. They let you just accurately measure out how much paint you need. You don't waste any, you can mix it really easily. They're fantastic for keeping your finishes.
I only did two coats of the workshop blue, patent pending, and then pulled off the tape, let them dry overnight, and came back for some brassy gold on the knobs, I think was the choice. One, because it looks cool, two, because I just happen to have a tube of it lying around. And then finally, protecting all of that paint so it doesn't chip off or wear away with one coat of clear water-based poly. Borrowed a labeler from a mate because my memory is going with me old age. And this actually took a whole day in itself, just working out what screws need to go where, how many I can fit in a drawer. And I'm going to say that I designed it this way so that the Craig boxes would fit in there, but that was actually complete and utter ass. It was pure coincidence that they fit in there perfectly. And some of my Phillips head screws, my Robertson head screws, and then I just went through all of my little bits of small storage for washers, nails, brads, plugs, all those sorts of things. Where I could, I made a couple of cheeky little dividers and just one brad nail in the side to store the things that I didn't have that many of, the smaller screws and that sort of bizzo. And they just, as Steve designed it, turned it into a small hardware store of my very own. I got rid of all of that crappy random storage and ended up with this beauty. I think it is my most satisfying project to date and probably the one that I pumped the most number of hours into. It's just such a massive improvement. I loved every step. It took me months, but I don't care. That's what a woodworking hobby is all about. Enjoying the time in your shop and ending up with something cool. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.